Okay, normally I'll feed these guys um, with a you know, cardboard shield in front of me so they can't hear me. I don't say, I don't talk when I'm feeding them and uh and i don't let them see me but i always do this one time a year so uh so people can see them oh my goodness oh that was very good all right go on get some more there we go see we try to get them re-nested if we can but you know sometimes it's just not possible but then um Later on, I'll start using the whistle. When I come in, I toot the whistle, and that that sets up the food association so that uh, whenever I, uh, uh, you know, transition them to the outer chamber, and then I open the door, um, then all I have to do is go out and toot the whistle, and they come wherever they are in the woods. They come back and uh, and feed. It's amazing how that works. And this one has a questionable leg, so I may end up having to put him down. But he's, I can't put him together because uh, that other one's so much, um, so much bigger. Yeah, oh, that was good. Oh, that was very, very, oh, that's very tasty, Mommy. Thank you, thank you. And you can see these are pretty big chunks. You know, they can swallow a third of their body weight whole, so it's okay. And all this is, is, um, all it, it's, um, rat. See, this is where some of the rehabbers screw up is that they start feeding these babies f fur from the start and that takes up you know and their guts aren't um, developed yet so that food just I mean that fur just sits there takes up room in the stomach where the nutrients should go and then they can't eat a full meal so then you're you're here every hour um, you know, give them a little bit of food until they produce that pellet. So the idea is to uh, skin out the food. So I cut the paws off, cut the head off, uh, cut the tail off, and then just take his little coat off. Cut the um, stomach and the intestines out. Of course, there's still some trace minerals left from the fecal material. Are you still looking for a handout here? There you go. Um... So then in a couple of weeks, they'll start uh, producing the castings. And that way I can uh, cut my feeding down. I'm feeding them every every three or four hours. So, of course, this time of year, I'm all ragged out. I can't get any sleep. But that's okay. And, of course, the parents don't stick to a certain schedule. I was talking to my colleague, Kim, about this the other day. We try to keep to a, kind of a somewhat of a schedule because their feathers are growing so quickly. And if they go long periods of time between feedings, then when they get older, uh, you can hold their feathers up to the light and you can see fret marks. So, um, so as a rehabber, it's, you know, I think it's our job to do as well as the parents could do as far as the feeding department. And, um, you know, since we have constant access to food, we're not out actually hunting it, um, then we can do a little better in that regard. He says, hey, I'm not done yet. Here. There we go. Come on. And of course they make a mess. But that's okay. My poor dear ex-husband, um, he's such a he's such a nice guy, just a good hearted person. But he's very clean. And he um, you know. <laughs> He just couldn't take it anymore. But the funny thing is, and I'm very grateful to this day, he still donates to our charity. He calls it hush money so he doesn't have to live with me anymore. Okay. All right, this will be the only feeding you'll see. Um, it's not, it's kind of boring to uh, film the feeding from behind the, um, 
a shield. <laughs> but it's an important part of, uh, of what we do. Okay, then. Um, that's it from Hawk Talk Central. We'll check in later.